What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another training guide. So we're getting through these epics now. Apologies about my camera lads, it's still acting the fool. I don't know what's going on with it. I need to fix my light source and I need to fix my background. So it is a bit flickering, it is a bit distracting, but apologies for that if it is annoying you. We are going to be working on the last couple of legends here that we have, the last epics that we have, okay? So we're going to be grouping together Alonso and we're also going to throw in Guardiola and Ambrosini. We're going to leave Scolzi for it's his own video because I want to talk a little bit about shooting attacking midfielders. They are a very underrated player, especially now that long range shooting is very viable, right? But we are going to group together Alonso, Guardiola and Ambrosini. We're going to actually show you the difference between these because I get asked this question a lot, right? And I see videos, right, where people are talking about orchestrator, they're talking about anchorman. They don't really know what the role does, right? Now, I am working on a, a big video for this, but this is a really good example of how to train players based on their play style, not their stats, okay? So, orchestrator Zabi, Xabi Alonso, okay? We've also got Guardiola, who's down as an orchestrator. We'll cover him. And we're going to be comparing him with Ambrosini, who's an anchorman, right? So, before we even start the video, we're going to go back out here to the main page. And I'm going to take a bit longer with this video. You can skip ahead if you want to. But we are going to take a quick look at what the information it gives us and what they define as the player's play styles, okay? So the two we're going to be looking at here are going to be um, for our anchorman and our, yeah, our anchorman and our orchestrator. So an anchorman like Ambrosini is defined as a deep sitting defensive midfielder protecting the back line. That to me reads, and how I train my anchorman, that is a third centre back if you're playing two at the back or it's a fourth center back if you're playing three at the back, right? Now, it's not as simple as that, but we'll show you. Orchestrator, a player who lurks in deeper positions ready to initiate attacks. So both are deep sitting, both are in that hole between the midfield and the defense, in that little pocket, right? So they're the opposite of the attacking midfielder. So they've got two jobs. They have cut and passing lanes, and they also have a blocker if you're an anchorman, and then cut and pass in lanes and start an attacks if you are an orchestrator, okay? Now, destroyer is a different one in a box. The box is a different one. These two kind of go hand in hand because one is a passing and one is a blocker, right? So we're going to go into that. So we are going to start with Alonso. We're going to take a look at him, and then we're going to go over to eFootball DB and show you my build of him. Um, I think Alonso is a fantastic player. He's definitely slept on because I don't think people are training him correctly, Okay. Straight off the rip, unwavering form, B rating, that's perfect. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. You know exactly what you're going getting with him. He's also got some really good shooting stats, some good, really good passing stats. One touch pass, true pass, and way to pass, pin pie cross it, low loft the pass. He's also got fighting spirit, lads. So you're not going to be able to, you don't have to neglect all those stats, but you can ignore some of the stats if you want to have more of an attacking option, right? So when we go over to eFootball DB here, ugh, excuse me. I'm actually going to hide my webcam here a sec to give you the full show here. Um, so when we go over here, we're going to take a look at his passing stats, right? So I have just boosted up seven into passing, dribbling, and dexterity. You're not going to get the acceleration and speed up higher than 72, 73, but you do want that balance to be about the 70 mark because he does have high physical contact. It is the same with Guardiola. He has the high physical contact. So you don't need to worry too much about the balance because you're not going to be running into, you know, forward positions like Romario or wingers that are attacking midfielders like Pedri or Messi or Neymar or whoever that you are going to be looking to get on the ball and get rid of the ball straight away. That follows through with the dribbling as well. These three stats, ball control, you want the ball to stick to your orchestrator's foot, right? Trust me, I have done so many builds of orchestrators, lads. Trust me on this. Ball control is huge. Tight possession is nice, but ball control is the key stat if you want to get the ball out of your feet. If you've played with Declan Rice, I know he's an anchorman or a destroyer, but if you've played with players that have low ball control, you do get caught in possession once or twice a game, no matter what you do, right? Yes, there is obviously input lag and all that sort of stuff, but I'm talking from a purely gameplay perspective. Ball control is a very slept on key stat that they've really started to kind of bring to the fore. I would say it's as important as defensive engagement now for defensive minded players. The minute you get the ball with Alonso or Guardiola, lads, right? You're just going to be getting the ball, getting rid of it. Now, we've pumped up his low pass and lofted pass. It's very rare that you can get a player with 97 lofted pass and over 95 low pass with the form arrow. So we've gone for that to spoil ourselves. Speed, acceleration, balance, and stamina don't really come into it with this card because, as I said, the minute we get the ball, we're looking to rely on his player skills, his player ID, and, of course, these defensive stats when he doesn't have the ball. But it's all about passing. 
it's all about curl, it's all about the ball control, and it's the same for Guardiola. Now, we have popped in six into aerial strength and eight into defending. I know I'll get asked the question, why you actually put them in at all and, you know, put it into dribbling to get your 90 ball control? You can do that. If you are going to be playing Alonso in a two-man pivot and you have an anchorman or a destroyer with Alonso as your orchestrator is your CMF rather than your DMF, yes, and you will get a better card there. You'll be 96 overall. But I do feel like that the first version of him with that kind of ball control at 87, 88, and the defensive stats or the aerial strength does come into it, mainly because he's got really low balance, right? This is even more evident in Guardiola, right? If you kind of train Guardiola up defensively and put, put 11 into him, into his stats there defensively, but you ignore aerial strength, you're only going to have like 75 physical contact. You pair that with the balance of 63, and also with the tight possession of 80, you are asking for a little bit of trouble against very dominant players that are just going to press the debt out of you. So I would definitely say, when you are focusing on an orchestrator, get the passing into the 90s. I don't often recommend put passing into the 90s, but with the way that the passing is at the moment, it is hugely important to have the passing now. Since the last patch, I would say even since last Thursday, I've changed my stance on this, you know, from playing loads of games over the last couple of days in the road to glory and in co-op the passing stat does matter when it is over 90 um, and the defensive engagement that would be for all off the ball you're not going to be dependent on Guardiola to you know be last man back but if you are using the sub tactic to slot him in uh, as a CB when you don't have the ball if you're playing deep line on him with an individual instruction I will cover this in a future video that is where you're going to be going right but Alonso and Guardiola as orchestrators because they're down as a play style your main role is get the ball back, right? Interception, blocker, fighting spirit, one-touch pass, true pass, and he's got excellent stats. But you're going to be getting the ball back or passing the ball to these guys and then just getting it out of their feet straight as. You're not going to be dribbling. You're not going to be dilly-dallying on the ball. You're basically going to be getting the ball as easy as that. Just get rid of it. Now, right, we will take a look at Ambrosini, okay? Because he is a very unique player in the fact that his stats kind of align with centre-backs, right? His player skills align with a centre-back as well. But he's also got low loft to pass, way to pass, to go along with blocker, interception, sliding, tackle, fighting spirit, and heading, okay? So I do think that if you are looking to use a player like Ambrosini, you do not train him up like an orchestrator. You do not train him up like a destroyer, and you do not train him up like a box-to-box. -box. I've seen people do that, and I do have to disagree with it. Obviously, my, op my opinion isn't, you know, the only opinion out there, but I think that you have to hit, if you want to see the best version of Ambrosini, and this goes for any anchorman, if you're playing them in the role that they're designed to do. If you are playing with Declan Rice, in that anchorman role, if you are playing with any anchorman in the game, right, we can have a look at anchormans in a second of what they actually play like, okay, so I mean, if you look at anchormans there, uh, Ambrosini is going to be the type of player that will just sit in the pocket and just pick off blocking lanes and then pick off passes and just get on so many interceptions, he has blocker, he has interception, that's all you need defensively, but on top of that, we're giving him 94 defensive engagement, 88 aggression and 88 defensive awareness, that's going to get the boost with the form arrow. We also have jump, which is going to be 88. That's going to get the boost with the form arrow. And you will notice the difference between his dribbling and his passing. Ambrosini is not a playmaker. He is not an orchestrator. He is literally block the ball and simple tap X pass away. No spreads, no switches. Obviously, your skill level will come into it. But that is a key difference between these three guys. And it's a nice way to compare the three of them and show you how they should be trained. Because I definitely think you're doing a disservice to Ambrosini and any anchorman if you don't have one or two of his defensive stats into the 90s. Obviously, there's exceptions to the rule. You know, there is exceptions to the rule. You do have, if you take a look here, if we were to take a look at anchorman here, you will get a flavor of how these players operate. So, so Fabinho, Barrios, Sergio Busquets, Rodri, Casemiro, you know, all of these guys share that similarity where they're going to be sitting in the pocket. Look at their defensive stats. I mean, you train up uh, a Casemiro, you pop him in, there's where your card is based on, and then the rest of the stats follow suit, right? It's not about passing or dribbling with these guys. It's about being an absolute stopper and stopping the supply line through from your opponent's midfield to the, to the strikers. So that is it for me, lads. I will be back. Hope you guys enjoyed this training guide. Up next, we're going to have Scolzi, and then we'll round off with the rest of the players. I think we have Bebeto, we have Salas, and we have Zamorano, and that's it. And then we move on to the next training guides uh, for the Italian League, and then whatever comes after. So if you've enjoyed the video, lads, make sure you subscribe. I'll be back soon with another video, and I will talk to you then. Peace.